Okay, so we're going to take a look at page properties in this lesson. There's a variety of different options for the way your page can be displayed and the way it acts. Um, if we double click on our page, you're given the page properties dialog and you can edit this stuff in here or if you prefer, I'm going to close mine, and you can do it from the properties inspector. I prefer that because I can see it in real time. So we can rename our page here. I'm going to name mine Welcome and we can set our page style so we've got a few choices here solid color gradient or image for solid color just use this back color chip click on the arrow at the end here and select any color you want blue red yellow and so forth for a gradient background select gradient from the style pull down and then just set your colors up here for example uh, a really good one that I use a lot is white to beige it's very subtle, works well for certain types of presentations, or uh, white to purple works really well for certain types of presentations. Um, yellow to red is very exciting too. So gradient backgrounds are easy to set up and they're kind of dramatic and they keep your file sizes down. Another option in the style pull down here is image. So let's go ahead and set up an image background and again you'll just click on the little ellipsis here in the image um, area here in the image row and from the gallery we'll go to the highest level and choose abstracts and we'll go in here and take a look so you can see there's a wide variety of options here um, let's see this one looks kind of nice so we'll select that we'll press OK as you can see it attaches it to the page and we have some options here in the image mode pull down we can tile the image that is if it's smaller than the page it'll tile to fit the size of the page we can display the image at actual size or we can fit to page in this case it's fitting it to the page and it looks good but if we set it to actual size you can see here it aligns the top left corner to the top left corner of the page and in this case it's a large image so it extends beyond the page but we'll leave ours at fit to page okay so that's the style options uh, as well here we've got some transition options these only apply to uh, projects which have more than one page on them I'm going to quickly set up a button here with a page jump action to page 2 and create a page 2 and I want you guys to just watch and follow along I wouldn't get too too worried about um, how I've done this yet for now I think if you guys just see how it's done later on it'll become apparent and we'll take a look at some different stuff so I've created a different page background on page 1 and I'm just doing this for the purposes of showing you guys how to create a transition so I'm going to which is part of the page properties of course I'm going to set up a button really fast and I'm just going to add an action to it from our page actions that tells this button when it's clicked to page jump so I'll double click that to the next page page one and this will accommodate our transition okay so I wouldn't get too worried about if this is complicated or whatnot now it's actually very easy and you guys will um, see in the next couple lessons how easy it is so on our button here we're going to uh, or sorry on our page here we're going to set up a transition so in our transition area we're going to choose dissolve and settings will leave to click button and we'll just leave the dissolve uh, transition at the default settings um, and we're going to go ahead and preview at this point so you can see what the transition does if we click on the button it creates that dissolve effect into the next page so there's a variety of transitions to check out, even some by plugins, and you can go ahead and do that when you have time. So I'm going to remove this button and remove this second page so that we can focus back on our page uh, um, page properties here. And I'm going to close up the transition thing. Okay, so we've got a couple more options here for inheritance. We're going to be touching on that in the next lesson, so for now I'm going to leave that alone. And we'll just look at the actions area here your page has an ability to contain actions just like objects do so for example on show on close on audio these are all different events that de denote um, actions when they will be triggered so for example on show means when the page is shown it will trigger whatever actions are in that area um, on close means when the page is closed it'll trigger those actions and so forth okay so that takes care of the page properties it's pretty easy stuff and you guys should go through it and experiment and I think you'll find that um, the sky's the limit really you can uh, when you combine this sort of thing with the custom masks that we look at earlier for example in the project window settings 
you can see I'm going to select one here from the gallery uh, that looks pretty good because it's obvious you can see that you can actually combine the images with the masks and create some really advanced effects so let's go on to the next lesson now